What lifts Hindenburg into the air is hydrogen gas. Five million cubic feet of it are stored in 16 gas cells, giant bags that fill the ship from end to end. Hydrogen is the lightest element on the periodic table. Because it's lighter than air, it's buoyant. It will go up if surrounded by air. But mixed with air, it's also extremely flammable, a bomb waiting to explode. Everyone knew that hydrogen burned, and it burned furiously. But the Germans had the feeling, this overconfidence, that after 37 years of working with hydrogen, we got this. We know how to deal with hydrogen safely. That track record begins in 1909, when the German Zeppelin company starts the world's first passenger airline. Two decades later, after Charles Lindbergh crosses the Atlantic, their airship Graf Zeppelin makes an international publicity flight. In 1929, the Hindenburg's predecessor, the Graf Zeppelin, flew from Germany here to Lakehurst with paying passengers and then did a uh, circumnavigation of the globe. Their idea, their vision, was that they were going to have a fleet of these ships crossing weekly in the same way that there was a fleet of ocean liners that crossed weekly. Over the next several years, the Graf Zeppelin carries thousands of passengers without a single mishap and proves the concept. The next step, expand to the US. They had already established service with the Graf Zeppelin to South America. It was a tremendous public relations and investment opportunity for German airship interests. All they need now is more and bigger ships. The Hindenburg will be the first of the new model. It's over three times longer than a 747, constructed around a lightweight aluminum frame. Hindenburg basically was a metal framework that was kind of an engineering miracle in that it had to be very big, it had to be very strong, and it had to be very, very light. Outside the frame, a painted fabric skin. The fabric covering was there to give it an aerodynamic shape and to protect the gas cells that were inside the covering. Two diesel engines on each side propel the ship through the air. A rudder steers it left and right, elevators up and down. The crew controls the ship from a small car mounted to the underside. Starting in 1936, the ship makes propaganda flights for Germany's Nazi government at Nuremberg rallies and the Berlin Olympics. That year, she crosses the Atlantic 36 times. Hindenburg has carried almost 2,000 passengers without a single mishap. The 1936 service was a testing period to see if this thing could be made to work, and it worked very successfully. For the 1937 season, there is one overriding priority. The key in the mind of the Germans was to now tighten up the schedule and make for more prompt arrivals and departures. But on the very first flight, the schedule slips. The first problem is bad weather all the way across, which delays them. And so the ship was about 12 hours behind schedule. They arrive over in Manhattan at 3.10 p.m. that afternoon, and they head directly to Lakehurst. Lakehurst cannot receive them, and the weather conditions are unsettled. There were thunderstorms. You're trying to get this airship on the ground. You're now under a lot more stress than you ordinarily would be. Hindenburg circles over New Jersey in a holding pattern, waiting for Charles Rosendahl, commander at Lakehurst, to approve landing. As seven o'clock is approaching, Commander Rosendahl signals that conditions now suitable for landing, recommend landing now. The ship begins its final approach. The Hindenburg makes a wide circle of the field and approaches from the north. Well, here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. We're out now outside of the hangar. Reporter Herbert Morrison is recording a description of Hindenburg's arrival for later broadcast on radio. The thousands of people have come out to witness the landing of this great airship. The barometer is dropping. The wind is shifting. It made a turn to realign so that its nose was pointing into the wind. They dropped two lines called trail lines. 
The lines let the ground crew pull the ship into position and secure it. In subsequent investigations, these ropes will come under intense scrutiny. Roughly four minutes after dropping these landing lines, fire erupted. Barely a minute, there's nothing left but smoking wreckage. Of 97 passengers and crew, 35 are dead, plus one ground crewman. 